John, the lovely and talented John Hudson, I'm not liking the shave that you had. I mean, you're losing your Barry Gibb look. Oh, I, I, I know, but my, my wife does not like me in beards, so I, I really don't have a choice in the matter. Wow. Wow. You're killing me here. Yeah, no, no, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, no, it, it's funny because because I I actually I, I had trouble removing it to be very honest with you and I was like, ah, I was like, nah, I was like no, but yeah, no 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 choice in the matter. How are we no. supposed to sing? How good is your love now to you? Oh well, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that you know we can struggle we can struggle through. I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can we can we can I, we'll, we'll I, prevail. I'm sure we can. Uh, my friend, it is time for the Unbiased UFO Report once again, and it's always a good time to have you here. What do you got for us to kick things off tonight? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I was actually, I was trying to, to the, the second item I have is, is something I want to go into for a little while. So I was trying to break it out into, um, into um, uh, you know, uh, more Stages. tight areas, you know. Yeah, and so and I, I, I was in the middle of doing so, I didn't get a chance. Let me just send you at least for what, what I have so far. Um, but um, but the, you know the first thing we want to, well, I mean, first off, hey, thank you everyone for sticking around. Really do appreciate it. And um, I got to admit, it's a little um, uh, apprehensive coming in after a swamp dweller. That's uh, quite a man. I love listening to that guy's voice. Um, but yeah, so the first the first really interesting topic uh, comes into um, this article that um, that several people were sending around, including uh, including yourself, uh, talking about the fact that you know basically throwing some shade. Um, I wouldn't even say it that way. I would argue that what they're doing is uh, finally proper journalism. <laughs> that basically what they're saying is they're 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 pushing back. And they're saying, hey, what about this? And what does this mean? And should we be worried about this? And should this be making us suspicious? And it's a very, um, it's a, it's a more classically, um, 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 you know, conservative viewpoint of, of, the, of, of everything. And essentially, it, it's, it's what I would have hoped to have been seeing from the mainstream news media this entire time, and haven't seen. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it needs to be called out because it's amazing, but in a way, it's almost kind of sad that it is amazing. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, for the longest time, people have heard me whine and gripe about the fact that there hasn't been any other look at the other side of ufology. It's all been about Elizondo, Mellon, the late Harry Reid, the government. What does the government know about everything and so on and so forth. We really haven't seen a lot of counter stories of people just saying, whoa, 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 let's sit back and, and chill here for a second, folks, and let's take a look at the other side of why this just may not be exactly what we're hoping for. You know, I mean, do we yep. want that much of a controlled disclosure? So the fact that both MUFON and you know, love him or hate him, Stephen Greer kind of played the the counter side of the UFO report. I thought NBC did a great job on this. Oh, I do too. I do too. And and I, and I should point out that they're they're the second ones I've seen do this. And I I, I looked for the first one that I saw a couple of days ago, and I can't find it. So I know they aren't they aren't alone in doing this. This is the second group I've seen take this approach. And and like I said, to me. This is what I would normally expect out of mainstream news. I mean, this this is the this is the kind of there's a, there was almost a it's not quite satire, but you know what I mean. There was a there was a little bit of a nudging aspect to it, right? Like there was a little bit of a of a hey, you know, poking at the bear sort of a thing to it, which I've always liked in in American journalism that we've never seen in in the in the, on the UFO side of things. That I think hopefully, I mean, well, boy, man, if this becomes a trend, I'll be one happy camper. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and you know, what were some of those counterpoints that, that people were saying? Um, well, I mean, it, it definitely, it definitely got into, you know, it definitely got into, you know, some pretty interesting, you know, debates and so forth. And, um, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, to me, um, you know, most of the counterpoints, you know, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I was trying to remember, I don't think any, like none of them stood out to me. Like none of them caught me off guard as as anything like ooh and 
and and I and I was I I personally I think there are a couple of things that you could call out that might be considered kind of gotchas that didn't get called out, and so like it was a very it was a very polite article. It really was. Okay, do you see this catching any traction that's going to open up the eyes to maybe other journalists out there to to realize that there is MUFON, there is the SCU, there is Stephen Greer, there is New Fork, and other a- areas of expertise of people with just as highly educated backgrounds who have the ability to speak on this subject? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, well, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of trying on that one. Uh, because I, I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily fond of those of those sources that you're you're talking about. But yeah, but I understand your point. Yeah. So your thought is, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I I got I got I got caught off by some, by something. Can, can you remind me again? I just got my my, my mind just went because I, I got. This is why I can never look at chat. Like you all stop talking. I'd really appreciate it. But can, for, <laughs> you don't just take a deep breath. Hold yourselves. So what, were, what were you saying? You're talking yeah, just about pause. The, just, just pause. Yeah, just, everyone just pause. Just everyone just pause. All right. What we need well, cause, to do because I, I don't. I'm not a big fan. Like I'm not a big fan of Greer. Right. I'm not a big fan. And so, so I. The point I was going to make was that was that while I don't necessarily want them to start leaning on those sources, what I do hope this starts is a trend where other periodicals look at this and realize, hey, we do have the leg room to push these buttons. We do have the, 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 the reason to push back and we do have the readership to actually do so. Uh, what I'm hoping the trend that we see start is this style of writing, not a, a fallback to those, to those sources. Where I found it refreshing was it wasn't the same narrative that we've been used to seeing for the last four years. You know, that the, we have to press the government. The government, is, it was all about technology. It was all about the three videos. It was all about the United States Navy, Elizondo, Mellon, as I said earlier. And what is the government going to do? Narr- threat narrative, it's China, it's Russia, it's some other sort of of area that that we can't figure out. Some terrorist organization that's infiltrated the military hardware. I mean, we've heard every excuse, John, regarding this subject. We really have. Oh. And I'm just I'm just really trying to to gain control of everything. And this is why we've always told our readers over and our listeners over the years, take a step back, see what is missing, and that is a counterpoint because journalism mm-hmm. is point counterpoint regarding the subject and the fact that four years in we are now seeing msnbc of all people and all outlets to kind Mm -hmm. of say hey is there another side to this Mm -hmm. it really really made me feel good it It really did oh yeah no i i i I, that that's really that was my big takeaway from this for me this this came off as almost a feel-good article which i'm sure other people didn't take it as but i think for the same reasons you did all right well, let's move on. You you want to spend some time on the next article. Yeah, this so you're is getting fun. very excited about it. This so is, this is fun. Uh, good friend of this show, Dan yes. Warren, who has one of the largest UFO TikTok uh, channels out there. He's got over yeah, he's 65. He's got at least three followers. Oh, is it? Okay, good. More than three now. Oh. Yeah. yeah, way more than three. About oh, 65,000 more than three. Well, he he did a great post the other day about this alleged United States Air Force UFO manual that was written and in, in doctrines between 1968 and 1970. What do you know about this? So so I don't know about you, but I had I had I'd heard rumors about this for years upon years back when I thought it was a myth. And then a couple of years ago, I found that it was real, but I didn't get a chance to see it. And then later on, like I think it was George Knapp and some other people came out with it and they published it and like it was on Mystery Wire and there's a couple other places, but no one really seemed to pay attention to it. And, you know, and so, but what it came down to was that Dan, as, as honestly, we all should be doing, and this is one of the comments I want to make, is that, um, is that he, what he's doing is he's, he's cherry picking some of the what he considers some of the most impressive data points that he's run into in his research 
And he's just kind of advertising it out there because there's all these new people coming into you into the topic that don't have this old this old, old knowledge. And so basically he made a post about this Air Force manual. And so for those that aren't aware, just real briefly, basically between 68 and 1970, the U.S. Air Force had a physics class. And one of the textbooks that was required for that physics class um, had a, the, the last section of the book was on UFOs. And um, only about, um, uh, I think it was about 25 people took the class, uh, a, a segment. And so uh, I forget how many years, like they get, I mean, so we're talking about, you know, probably only a couple hundred people actually went through this course, but um, the course is available. You, you can you can download it. it um, I'll, I'll provide a link later in my notes and so forth. And I was actually reading it before the show, and and um, it's it's actually more interesting than I remember it being. It's actually it's a really it's, it's an interesting document. But the cool part was was it nice on Dan to do this. I encourage everyone to go read it yourselves. It's an interesting thing, and we'll talk a little bit more about the document in a second. But what I want to talk about first is that when he did this, Eric Weinstein, who some of you may or may not know, but Eric is. Um, as he uh, argues, he is the, the the mathematician with the most followers on Twitter, um, um, which he considers to be quite a triumph. Um, but I mean, we're talking, you know, 500,000 followers. He, he's a very, very uh, well, well listened to individual. Eric's also uh, a, a wicked smart dude. Um, very, he's, he's impressive. And um, and uh, and he 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 basically does some some good thinking and he does a lot of podcasting with with Lex Friedman and a couple other people and so forth. And he has been one of the people that have kind of recently turned and started realizing that there's something to this UFO story. And he's started expressing a lot of angst that he's been lied to and so forth. Well, he picked up on this story because of what Dan wrote and started like sending it out to people going is this real? Does anyone have any proof of this? Like, why haven't I heard of this? Like, 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 like wanting to know what the hell was going on. Well, needless to say, a bunch of people respond with the links. Well, so now we have Eric Weinstein's 500,000 plus followers and all the people that they forwarded to watching him get very animated and serious about reading this document all because Dan Warren decided to essentially regurgitate an, a, a previous episode he did and splash it out as a commercial, <laughs> right? I mean, it's essentially what it was, right? It done in a, in a good way. And essentially, this is how Weinstein found out about it. And so the one point I want to make before we get into the document a little bit is that, is that to, because we are at a phase in this whole process where, look, some of the most significant people who will ever give anything to this field have not even joined yet. Some of the most profound people that will ever do any work in this field have not even been born yet. Okay. So what it means is that there are always new people coming into it. And so we always have to recognize that we need some fun, easy, simple way for people that are coming into it to still get a, get us a, a, a good sampling of, of the of the good older stuff right the of the, all that all that fantastic knowledge that you would have gotten if you gotten into this earlier and that's essentially what dan did and what we're seeing is the repercussions of what that does the repercussions is someone like eric weinstein who has a huge base of followers now showing tremendous interest in this document and getting all of his followers interested in this document right and, well, and he even said before, point before blank yeah before you go any further let's read uh, some tweets from Eric Weinstein for our audience. And and he is like, is there such a text? Has the USG or US government owned up to it? Is there a PDF of it circulating? Are there others attached to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base or the RIAS or the Physical Fields Institute at of UNC Chapel Hill, so the University of North Carolina, or Brown University's Nonlinear Dynamics Group or the Glenn L. Martin Company? And so then he follows up by saying, sorry for the weird specificity, but I am trying to link this to things that I know to be real that I've been puzzled about for years that never made sense to me. Also, it's hard to fake an entire text competently. So this is interesting. So this is where it really gets 
dirty. And then you can see everybody from not dirty in a bad way, but you know, the, the, the gloves are coming off of Eric is what you're saying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, for sure. Because once again, this for Eric, this is just now a, yet another example of something that he feels that he should have been completely aware of that has been kept from him. And that's the way he views it, right? Is it, why are you keeping data from me? We're talking about a TikTok. Wait, that hold on, Dave, 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 Flynn, sorry, I have an emergency. Uh, all of you wrenches, I want everyone that's been talking about yummy food, I want them all suspended. That was evil. Like people were going off about all this dessert. That was awful. Radio, radio doesn't have wrenches, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Boy, you got wrenches in the chat room, right? Well, I realize that, but the radio yeah, side yeah. can't see that. Yeah, true, 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 true. Stop talking food, chat room. We're we're hungry over here. We oh, are hungry. Awful. Here. Awful. I know. Now I got to go through this. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm watching all of you. I know who all of you pie are. And cheese, apples and I know salt. Who all of you are. Apple pie and vanilla ice cream, pecan pie, lemon water and mint. We'll calm down. The, I'll, I'll have some lemon water. You're making afterwards. this worse, dude, Dave. Just I, keep I going know. back. Get back to the UFOs, man. Just a back to that. the UFOs. All right. So Dan Warren, who is a guest here recently, a good friend of this show, has the most popular TikTok channel going regarding UFOs. He's got over sixty-five thousand subscribers. Uh, he was one of his posts was caught up today by Eric Weinstein, who's one of the literally considered one of the of the most noble mathematicians in the United States. I think that's a fair comment to make. And Weinstein absolutely blew up in a positive way about UFOs. Mm -hmm. So John on Twitter, this all happened at hashtag UFO Twitter. I mean, well, and, and this, and this has become, this has become par for the course for Eric because Eric Weinstein has been on this journey for, Oh, I don't know about nine months now. Where like it's he suddenly realized that oh my gosh, UFOs are real and like and like wow and and so it's been it's been kind of fun like watching him go through the process and so basically this was another situation where you know I mean I, I don't know how long ago it was but I can only imagine how he reacted when he found out about Benny and Barney Hill um, I mean it's like you know I mean like you can imagine like someone going through all these like <gasps> you know he already knows about. Barbara's are unfortunately, but, um, uh, you know, um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's just, it's, it's been fun watching him do it, but yeah, I mean, he was, he was really up. He was really, um, as you say, a upset in a good way that, that he didn't have, he had never heard of this document before. And, uh, and needless to say, you had a bunch of people, um, respond not only with links to the document, um, but also more background on, you know, uh, where the document, where a physical, the one guy posted a link to where two physical copies of this manual exists today at a, at a certain library um, at, that you can actually get access to. So like a bunch of people popped up with a bunch of really helpful information, which was super nice. Well, that's really cool in regards to that. What was the biggest shock to Eric Weinstein regarding this? Um, you know, I think for him, it, it, it's, it's probably the fact that it was, it was in this official you know, U S air force textbook, because I mean, essentially what people what like, like, this is why I personally like this whole story has always been like one of my favorites because, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In 1970 or whatever it was after the condom report came out, they pulled it out of the textbook, but here's the thing. They didn't know they were going to pull it out of the textbook when they wrote it. So this chapter was written. It was written by several people. It was edited by someone. All of their names are at the beginning of the document. They're all published there. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if anyone's tracked those people down, but I mean, some one of us should. And, and essentially it's saying, and it says point blank right in the beginning of the document. It's an amazing document. It says, it says we're not here to give you data. We're here to, to tell you, a, a, a paint you a story about the fact that contact has been coming to this planet for thousands of years. I mean, that's what it says right out in the beginning of the document, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a really, it's a really interesting document to read. And, and the thing is, is it, there's, there's nothing really significant in the document. It's, it's a, it's a very kind of, um, you know, I would consider it to be kind of a, um, kind of a, you know, a standard deep standard one, you know, just, you know, middle down the road, um, uh, 
you know, survey of, uh, of one, one reasonable hypothesis for what the hell's going on, right? And, but the fact that they actually got enough consistency within the Air Force to, you know, because I, mean, I, I don't know how textbooks are written in the Air Force, but I mean, usually there's several layers of peer review that goes on, right? through each iteration of a textbook, right? And so by the time a class has actually been created, you've had so many eyes and ears on that, on that, on those documents that someone would have pulled it if, if it wasn't supported. So what this means is that, and it survived through a, a, a enough cycles that it probably even, it may have even gone through one review while it was being taught, right? So the and, and it wasn't pulled because of its response or because of any it was pulled because of the content report. So essentially what you have here is you have what essentially should have been in the Air Force textbooks this entire time. But it wasn't. It was pulled for some reason. And for some reason it was only there for 2 years. And that's I mean and so this document should be taken very seriously. I mean well, this is the, this is the Air Force best foot forward from the point of view of 1968. I don't think Dan Warren is going to have a little bit of an issue if we play some of his TikToks here. Oh, I don't think so either. No, I think, yeah, I think if, he'd probably if love you're it. cool with that. I think yeah. uh, let's do this right now. And let's um, let me just unmute this. Let, let's take it in from part one to part eight. There's There's a little bit of a series here. So here's part one. Of this believe, but the U.S. Air Force Academy used to educate its cadets about UFOs between 1968 and 1970. And this wasn't just some professor's opinion. This was in their textbook, textbook which, was, which confirmed was confirmed by the, by the deputy, deputy director, director of public, of public information, information at the Air Force, Air Force Academy. Academy. The cadets, the cadets that enrolled, that enrolled in Physics, physics 370, 370 were required, were required to, have to have a textbook titled, titled Introductory, Introductory Space, Space Science. Science. The very, the very last, last chapter in this textbook was titled, was titled Unidentified, Unidentified Flying, Flying Objects. objects. And according, and according to the Lee more advanced, advanced students, students were taught to stop scoffing, scoffing at UFOs, UFOs and instead they keep, they keep an open mind, mind on, the on the subject. This course, this course was an elective, elective that attracted, that attracted about, 20 about 20 students per semester. semester. That means, that means for, the for the five semesters, semesters that this was in place, place, about 100 cadets were exposed to this information. But I got my hands on a copy of it, so I'm going to expose the rest of the world to this information. So make sure you hit that follow button. This textbook was written in 1968, back when the Air Force was still collecting UFO reports through Project Blue Book. But since the Air Force-sponsored Condon Report came out in early 1969 and stated that nothing had come from the study of UFOs in two decades, they decided to remove it from the curriculum. The findings of the Condon Report also resulted in the termination of Project Blue Book in that same year. Project Blue Book concluded by stating the following. No UFO reported, investigated, and evaluated by the Air Force has ever given any indication of threat to our national security. There has been no evidence discovered by the Air Force that sightings categorized as unidentified represent technological developments beyond the range of present-day scientific knowledge. There has been no indication that sightings categorized as unidentified are extraterrestrial vehicles. Based on those conclusions, the Air Force removed their chapter about UFOs and replaced it with a chapter called Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, which just so happens to be the term that they used in the Gillibrand Rubio Gallego Amendment, which establishes the next incarnation of Project Blue Book thanks to the signing of the NDAA for 2022. So you're not going to want to miss what comes next. All right, we're going to play one more here, and we'll get right into it. Hold on. I'm going to start off this deep dive into what the Air Force used to teach their cadets about UFOs by going over the conclusions first. They start off by concluding that from the available information, the UFO phenomena appears to have been global in nature for almost 50,000 years. And whatever these reliable people have witnessed, it could potentially be natural phenomenon, psychological in nature, or an unknown phenomena. But those possibilities are also questionable in view of some of the available data. This, of course, leaves us with the unpleasant possibility of alien visitors coming to Earth. And don't forget, this is the Air Force saying this, not me. 
And with the available but questionable data that exists, it suggests that there is at least three or four different groups of aliens, possibly at different stages of development, which is also difficult to accept. In 1968, this implied that there was life on the planets within our solar system, which I think has been ruled out at this point. Or it implies a surprisingly strong interest in Earth from members of other solar systems. And the authors of this chapter believe that the solution to the UFO problem may be obtained by a long and diligent effort of a large group of well-financed and competent scientists, similar in scope to the Manhattan Project. And the Gillibrand-Rubio-Gallego Amendment might finally be the beginning of that effort. But at the time, there was no evidence that such an effort was going to be made. But even if this effort is taken on, there is no guarantee of success due to the isolated and sporadic nature of sightings. And the possibility does exist that there may not be anything to find, which means we would be chasing our tells. So the Air Force recommended to their future leaders that the best thing to do is to keep an open and skeptical mind and to not take an extreme position on any side of this question. And it sounds like the same thing I've been saying to you guys is the most important part of looking into this topic is to think for yourself. Next, we get into the meat of the chapter. I'm going to start, start off this, off this deep dive, dive into what the Air Force, Air Force used to teach their cadets, cadets about UFOs, UFOs by going, going over the conclusions, conclusions first. first. What we're going to do is we're going to go into one more. we got time for one more, John, and then we'll quickly talk about it, then wrap it up. Here we go. Yep, yep, sounds good, bud. All right, let me just mute our mics here first. Part 3 on the Air Force Academy's chapter on UFOs. In the introduction, they start by asking, what is a UFO? Time out, time out. Before we dig into this, I want to challenge you guys. I want to challenge you to suspend your judgment. And instead of focusing on what information they're presenting and if you believe it or not, I want you to ask yourself something. Why? Why would the Air Force be presenting this information to their future leaders? So keep that in the back of your mind as you process the rest of this information. So what is a UFO? Well, according to Air Force Regulation 8017, a UFO is any aerial phenomenon or object which is unknown or appears out of the ordinary to the observer. This, of course, is a very broad definition, and it applies equally well to someone that's seeing their first noctilucent cloud at twilight or another individual that's seeing a helicopter for the first time. But most people consider the term UFO to mean an object which behaves in a strange or erratic manner while moving through the Earth's atmosphere. This strange phenomena has evoked strong emotions and great curiosity among a large segment of the world's population. The average person is interested because he loves a mystery. The professional military man is involved because of the possible threat to national security. And some, but not all, scientists are interested because of the basic curiosity that led them into becoming researchers in the first place. The literature associated with UFOs is vast and the stories are varied, so they could only provide a sketchy outline of the subject in this chapter. So this is what we'll be covering going forward. Part 3 on the Air Force Academy. We're going to leave it right there because anybody who wants to go check it on out can go to Dan Warren's fifth pillar of emphasis on TikTok. And once again, thank you, Dan Warren, for allowing us to use your audio on Spaced Out Radio. We greatly yes, yes. appreciate it. John, and I also about- encourage everyone to read the document as well. It's, it's worth reading. It's interesting. It's not, it's not long. It's like 16 pages or something. We got about a minute left. I mean, how does this change the game? I mean, this is important news. Um, so to me, it's it's it doesn't um, it doesn't change the game as much as I think it shows that we are we are we are on the brink of of entering new phases of the game, where the rules change once again and new players come onto the board and existing players have rules changed and maybe some other players aren't as significant so we shall see but i think that this is definitely a sign that we're seeing a change in strategy uh, and it's not even necessarily malicious i think a lot of it's very natural based on human personalities and just the fact that we're all you know at this point humans all right well john thank you so much for another great unbiased ufo report